This week I want to talk about metaphors, uh, uh, both organizational and uh, motivational. Uh, to start off with, uh, chapter 8 of the text describes metaphors used for motivation. And in doing so, they, uh, they also borrow metaphors that are used for organizations as well. Uh, metaphors certainly are useful in uh, uh, providing meaning. In other words, they can uh, provide meaning to something that is much more complex. Uh, of course, the disadvantage, as Dilt said, is uh, the map is not the territories. In other words, uh, uh, it's not the reality of the organization. It's just a map, and the reality is always going to be more complex. Um, another disadvantage is that a metaphor can limit a person's thinking by providing a frame within the metaphor. Um, the first one that the text talks about is the organization as a machine. Um, and in this one here, this uh, really um, this comes out of Frederick Taylor's scientific management and Max Weber's uh, bureaucracy. In other words, the organization has goals and objectives. It's structured with jobs and activities. The blueprint's the organizational chart, and this would be a functional chart. And it sets an expectation for how people should behave. It's the pre preferred metaphor, the metaphor of choice uh, used by engineers. A uh, uh, common example is uh, business is war. Uh, the next one that came out of the human relations movement from the 1920s and 30s is the organization as an organism, and uh, appropriately the CEO was the head of the organism. Um, so it's an open system, it must, uh, in other words, the environment's a consideration now, and, and the system must be able to adapt to that. Uh, survival and evolution or adaptation being uh, central concerns. Uh, the focus is on organization develop and pe development and people. Uh, the focus on ecology. It's uh, used by HR. In this, org this metaphor, uh, workers are actually people, whereas in uh, the organization as a machine, work workers are more of a variable labor cost. Uh, a current metaphor is the organization as a social system. This comes out of the work of Russell Acoff. Um, the organization <coughs> consists of interdependent parts. Each subgroup has an effect on the whole, but none has an independent effect. In other words, they, uh, the properties of the whole are, uh, are not represented in the parts. Um, the essential properties of the organization are determined from an interaction of those parts and not their actions taken separately. Uh, both the parts and the organization have purpose. This was a primary uh, shift in organizations following World War II. Um, uh, the business is a, a network. And so we, uh, we can see uh, certainly, uh, I.O. Uh, psychologists using this as well as uh, organizational leaders using this. Uh, it might be interesting to note as well that these different functions operating by different metaphors do not even talk the same language. So it's, uh, if you ever wonder why, how is it possible to have a meeting with multiple functions in the meeting and no one understand what's being said, this is why their, fr the, their frame for organization is different. Um, Landy and Conte, of course, uh, uh, they get into uh, uh, metaphors, uh, motivational metaphors. Uh, they talk about the person as a machine, which certainly would align with the organization as a machine. And they had the internal mechanical theories uh, of uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs and Herzberg's two-factor theory, and then the external mechanical theories, which include uh, a reinforcement theory or uh, behavioral theory. Uh, next, they had the metaphor of the person as a scientist, uh, which included uh, kind of the path goal theory, uh, the VIE theory, and equity theory. 
and they also had the uh, person as uh, intentional approach, and that included goal setting and action theory. And then uh, Landing Conti suggests the newest theory uh, is the person as an entrepreneur, which would kind of fit with uh, the rules of employment uh, uh, today. Um, so what we have is we have the use of metaphors uh, within organizations that certainly drive and block effective uh, communication. Um, they also uh, can be instrumental when thinking about uh, uh, motivation uh, within the organization as well. So uh, organizational metaphors provide a frame for thinking about the organization and often limit a person's behavior to within the, the boundaries and requirements of the metaphor itself. Thank you.